Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and welcome back to part one of the end of the year specials. There were so many games I played this year, and over one third of them were shooters, so it'll be no surprise to see some shooters in this bag. But here are numbers 20 to 11 of the best retro games I've played this year since there were so many again since I played what 31 shooters in 31 days so that was just madness but it was fun so starting off with an honorable mention I'm gonna give it up to this little guy you've got Kirby I guess this is Koro Koro Kirby but uh what was it called Kirby Tilt and Tumble, that's right. This is very unique. It's really hard to control when you're, you've are you got the system and you're turning it like that. I had one of those uh, turny thing, maze things when I was a kid and I didn't really like it then. And there's actually a throwback to this in, or those in uh, Kirby's Dreamland? No. What the heck is it called? Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Kirby Discovery, right, because of course there's two different titles. But yes, so Kirby Tilt and Tumble gets an honorable mention, again, uh, not making the top 20. But uh, yeah, there were so many games, uh, I couldn't do a top 10, and I was going to do a top 15, and at that point it's like, okay, well, there's a couple of series that can get no more than two entries because it's just not fair. And then I expanded it to 20, and it's like, okay, well, we've got that, and we've got honorable mentions, so we can do up to three, I guess. But, yeah, Kirby, honorable mention, uh, Tilt and Tumble, give it a try, you know. Uh, you do need the system and the game itself to uh, properly play it, because otherwise, what's the point? Uh, and moving on to number 20... Uh, you may recognize this from the classical music I played or sung myself uh, during the uh, Shots videos at Fridays. But Gyrus, again, there's nothing like it. The circular design I have not seen in a game since. Uh, I mean, what is it? Uh, Super Stardust HD. That's a twin six shooter, so already a completely different genre. And. You're going around the globe. But, uh, no. You got horizontal shooters. Hmm? Horizontal shooters, vertical shooters. And you've got the one standout. And Jairus gets my number 20 retro game of the year. So, that was very fun. What's next? Oh, big boy. Okay. Next up is Ghost Pilots for the Neo Geo. And, uh, this was awesome. I could have put, what was the other game? I was this close to putting, uh, Arrow Fighters 2. I'm not sure if that's the Japanese title or the American title. But, uh, or Arrow Wings 2. Okay, I think those are both of those. But, uh, because, like, they changed the mechanics for the final boss. And where you die at the final boss and you restart at the beginning of the stage and that didn't happen for anything or any other stage so why would they change that right there when you probably need it most for the respawn and yeah I'm sure the one credit clear people will uh, will say well, get good and, and stuff like that but uh, that's the only reason it's not on the list quite frankly but this one I did manage to beat and it's freaking awesome uh, yeah, 1940X, so World War II type of shooter, and I, I mean, I showed it off during 31 Days of Shooters in the Neo Block, but, uh, fantastic game, highly recommend it, uh, on the Neo or Arcades or however you can get your hands on it. Uh, next up, and this would have been higher probably had I beaten it. But, you know, learning this system in a day is not really good. And, I mean, Area 88, there we go, UN Squadron. It is a great game. Uh, and apparently you can farm the stages over and over to get the money to upgrade your ships to the maximum, which I did not know. Although, 
I was playing in the evening, so I probably wouldn't have wanted to do that, uh, you know, all night anyway. But, uh, yeah, totally beatable once you do get the upgrades. It is a great game, great music, great graphics. Um, uh, and yeah, if I start it a little earlier in the day next time, then hopefully I can beat it because this is a great game and highly recommend that for your Super Nintendo Super Famicom. What is next? And I'll probably go in a little quickly here, but uh, these are going to be shorter videos. I don't need to talk about the games as much as I did during 31 Days, if they even make 31 Days. Although, so far, all of these have. No surprise there. Uh, next up. <laughs> okay, so... Is we played Cho Aniki during 31 Days of Shooters, and... This game was just nuts. Uh, I, checkpoints are very forgiving. Uh, the power-up system's pretty good. So you definitely have a shot of beating this. Uh, but the final boss was a real challenge. I think I had, or was it the boss before that? That was a super challenge. So at one point I had to put the controller down, take a breather, you know, talk to some people online just to, you know, center myself. And then I came back and it took like 20 minutes to be, finish up the game. But uh, yeah, Cho Aniki. Uh, it may look weird, but it's a great shooter. And again, the graphics and music are great. So highly recommend that if you have a PC engine. Uh, next up. Interesting. Now, hmm. I guess this is lower on the list because I did play it on the Cowabunga collection. But, alright. Where'd it go? <laughs> there it is. Why was it down there? Uh, but, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Return of the Shredder or the Hyperstone Heist. Uh, gets my number 16 retro game of the year. Uh, 17, 18, 19, in case I didn't say the numbers. But number 16 goes to TMNT, the Hyperstone Heist. And again, the reason it's not higher on the list is because I did play it on the Cowabunga Collection. And surprisingly, it was one of the few games that I didn't notice any sort of input delay or lag. And so their Genesis or Mega Drive emulator must be much better than the NES one or the Super Nintendo one they were using. But uh, yes, of course, fantastic game. And heck, during one of the game nights, uh, the boys even came over and we played it and we beat it there. It was only two player, unfortunately, but uh, you know, can't have it all. But uh, yeah, Hyperstone Heist, great game, great graphics, great music. It's got the longer stages again. So if you want a, a different type of challenge than Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, then I highly recommend it. It controls pretty much the same, although you have a dedicated dash button, uh, which, what is it? I think you can actually do program that or remap the buttons on the Super Nintendo, but I always just double tapped or held the directional button and they started running anyway. But uh, yeah, that brings a new dimension of the game. Great game, highly recommend it. And yeah, it is one of the few that I actually do recommend on the Cowabunga collection. Uh, the Nintendo version, however, stay far away from. Play the original, you'll have a much better time. Uh, okay, so that kind of messed up the bag. Hopefully, the goodies are still in the right order. Number 15 Retro Game of the Year. Do, 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 do. It had to be Batman. I finally beat this thing after so long. And I own it as opposed to just being a rental. And again, the controls... Once you get wall jumping down, it is just, mwah, this game is fantastic. Uh, I know Batman being purple is a little bit weird, but it does stand out against the darker backgrounds, which were really well done. Uh, and it's totally beatable. I don't know why they say it's like Ninja Gaiden. It's not like Ninja Gaiden. But if you do manage to beat 
the five stage five boss and you die on the Joker and you will die to the Joker trust me you will restart at the beginning of the stage but you don't have to fight that boss again so you do have a chance it's totally beatable I uh, highly recommend this game for the Nintendo Entertainment System or, or Famicom next up our number 14 game of the year Retro game of the year is none other than Castlevania Bloodlines Vampire Killer. Or is it the new generation, maybe, in Europe? I'm not sure. But uh, I finally decided to get 100% of the trophies on the Anniversary Collection. So I played this as Johnny Morris, which I did for 31 Days of Horror. Or was it 31 Days of Castlevania Reorchestrated? Anyway, that's when I played it the first time on original hardware. It's not that difficult. People do complain. And they say you run out of continues, but you really don't. Uh, they even give you a password, and I think the continues reset after that. So, you know, there's no excuse. All Castlevania games are challenging, but this is not impossible to beat. Great game. Uh, the graphics, uh, the colors are a little bit weird still uh, being on the Mega Drive. But, uh, again, longer stages, like Turtles, you get the longer stages, uh, you get a different boss mix than the Nintendo games, and it's really great. You need to play Bloodlines on the Castlevania collection, which is really well done, unlike Kawabunga. Uh, moving on, we've got three more entries here. Number 13, and... Sorry. Okay, number 13, we have a choice between Kirby's Dreamland and Kirby's Adventure. And what I chose to do is go with Kirby's Dreamland because it's the original, it introduces the character, it's fun, it's pretty easy to beat, and I actually beat it twice in the same day, it was crazy. Uh, once on the handheld and once on the Wii version I was playing. But uh, honorable mention does go to Kirby's Adventure because, uh, you know, it's the first time you get the abilities. There are like one or two abilities, but they're power pickups. Uh, whereas here you can swallow the enemies. And this is really what defined Kirby from uh, for the future. But uh, yeah, Kirby's Dream Land. Number 13 game of the year, and Kirby's Adventure honorable mention for the same slot. Okay, and then, I don't know why I moved Hyperstone Heist down here, but probably because I didn't want to finish on two honorable mentions, but, uh, not honorable mentions, two games I don't have anything for. But first was Prehistoric Isle 2, which I beat at Mikado for 31 days of shooter that was freaking awesome you're fighting flying dinosaurs and the game is just awesome you gotta play that and then there was also Captain Tomaday which is one of the four Neo Geo shooters that are only on the arcade like Prehistoric Isle 2 or at least in their purest form and it's where you're a flying tomato and you punch instead of shooting bullets uh, or lasers or whatever I, it's kind of indescribable you have to see it to believe it and hopefully I'll put in some screenshots here because uh, Prehistoric Isle gets my number 12 game of the year and Captain Tomaday gets my number 11 game of the year and I think Hyperstone Heist was down here because I was gonna give an honorable mention to Turtles in Time, but I'm not going to give Turtles in Time an honorable mention because, like I said, input delay and lag on the Calabunga collection actually ruined that for me. So this year, Turtles in Time does not make the top 10 or not even the top 20. But them's the breaks. So that is the first part of my top 20 retro games of the year for 2022. Woo! And as always, these are games I have played 
in no particular order. I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but uh, I'll probably do that for part two. Uh, yeah, it's just the way I feel this year. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you come back for 10 to number one. And we'll see you next time. Until then, have a good one.